Hello, hello, and welcome back to the UV Effect Podcast. I'm just going to right off the bat give a huge thank you to everybody who has listened to part one and part two of the season premiere, Creatively Processes Inflammation. Oh, side note on the titles, if you hadn't noticed yet, you'll probably notice it soon. The titles are kind of a sneak peek into the uh, individual's final UV statement. Um, so you'll notice that more. Keep your keep your eye out for that. But anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so huge thank you for everybody who has tuned in, and also for all the wonderful comments and um, notes that I got um, on this episode, on the last couple episodes. Uh, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate um, all the notes and all the com- comments and everything. And keep sharing them with me. I love to hear them. My ego must be stroked. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But. Um, yeah, no, this is, it's been really wonderful, and I'm just I'm excited to keep going with this and to be sharing these this research and the case studies with you all, and you guys seem to enjoy it, so I'm happy. Um, so, yeah, let's hop into today's episode. Um, today we have a brand new case study to be going through. Um, his name is Myron. He's from Maryland, and... This is a fun one. I mean, well, it's an interesting one. Um, I was trying to decide which one I was going to be, you know, which one was going to be my next one, the second episode. I find it has to be kind of, it's an important choice, I guess. <laughs> For me, everything, it's, all, it's always an important choice. So I was making this one. I decided to do this one, and I found it was a really good choice because I think this one's a very relatable um, individual. He's someone who uh, is working in a job which, um, you know, he doesn't particularly love, although it gives him a good, um, you know, it provides and he's, you know, in a high position in his work. Um, But he finds more love and and joy um, outside of his work, outside of his profession. I'm pretty sure that can be a uh, a relatable idea for most people. Um, But in this process, I think it's really interesting how we get to kind of see for him how his UV um, has been utilized, how it can be utilized more, and how he's already been feeling the push to be doing more, but he just wasn't really sure why or how. And it kind of uncovered just a little baby step into what's next for him and how to live a more purpose-driven life. So I'm really excited for you to get into this episode. Quick little note, there will be some random noises like chair squeaks and drumming. He likes to do like body drumming. I couldn't cut it all out. So (laughs) um, just give you a heads up on that. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So um, we're going to kick this case study off with, of course, step one, identify. Y'all got a little insight into that from the first episode, so you kind of know what to expect. Um, But we're going to jump forward a few questions and ask one of my favorite ones. Um, And kind of this one starts to get immediately get to gauge his relationship. How would you describe your relationship with your profession slash main source of income? My relationship with it? Yeah. It's more so... uh necessity than um a desire so yeah like i said in the intro you know his work it's not the love of his life or anything but you know it 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 provides and that's kind of re-articulated in this next question slash answer all right next question what percentage of enjoyment do you get from your profession slash main source of income percentage Mm -hmm. so out of a hundred out of a hundred enjoyment um I'll enjoy getting paid, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I, he actually ends up giving this, like, about a, a 40%, I believe. But, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like it's pretty relatable. You know, this, it's not his, his dream job. He's not living, like, the ideal dream life or whatever. He's, he's doing what he needs to do to provide for himself, and it works. Um, but that's not what this process is about. We, we want to dig a little bit deeper, and so we do. So at this point, I um, ask him to list out a a few uh, the, the the hobbies the skills the talents things i call external abilities um that he does outside of his uh, profession and some of the things that he listed i'll share you know mountain biking was one playing guitar uh writing and singing producing he's also he's in a band he's also in ministry um so he does you know bible school he also does he does preaching and and mission strips and things like that so this is the kind of these are the parts of his life where there's actually a lot more enjoyment um a lot more direction and so you know what I'm asking him to do in this next moment is to tell me and list what attributes 
um, abilities, um, I call them internal abilities, lend or contribute to the things that you enjoy and are the most and that you are the best at. So let me give you guys just a little insight um, into what I'm searching for. What we're looking for here are internal abilities. Um, let me give you a little vocab lesson. Some of the vocabulary I developed for this. Uh, there are external abilities, which are skills, talents, things are which you develop and, and utilize physically. There are internal abilities, which are skills that are more so mental. They are internal. Um, there may be things like self-awareness or flexibility or like, you know, mental flexibility or even, you know, critical thinking. Right. And then there are innate gifts. Innate gifts are internal abilities that derive from an individual in an individual from birth. So they're they're natural, right? They don't they didn't have to be learned or taught, just developed in their own time, but they've, the individual has always had it. And so um, what we're doing in this particular part of the process is figuring out what internal what what are his internal abilities, right? Those, you know, talents, functions that are working internally in his mind. And then from there we're gonna narrow them down into actual innate gifts. So do you would you say that you're a, a focused person? A I can be if I mean if if it's something that I'm passionate about. Like I'm good at singular tasks. If it's like a whole bunch of things I got to do, like if I if I got a long to do list, it's like that's when I'm like ugh. But if you give me a singular task, I can dedicate myself and really give my all to it. So would you put maybe um, like sharp or um, do you enjoy myopic? Uh, it's like being singularly focused on something. I like that. It's when you're like really zeroed in on something yeah. very specific. You want to put it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> if you, you feel like a distraction. Usually it's a, I, oh, I usually hear it used in a negative connotation, but it's, it doesn't have to be. It's funny. I had actually never heard um, that term before, but then I, I had looked it up um, after. We looked up some synonyms um, during the conversation, and you know I saw things like one-track-minded and things like that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it definitely it can have negative connotation for sure, but... If it allows um, for this individual to, you know, having a one-track mind or what, being myopic, if it allows for this individual to be able to get things done with um, attention to detail, with um, a dedication, with, you know, a sense of precision, then, you know, I wouldn't consider that negative. You know, if it contributes to a person's ability to do something well, then it seems more of a contribution than it does a hindrance, right? So I think negative and positive is all about in the use of something, not just in what the definition um, almost implies. So yeah, from here we just kept going with identifying some more internal abilities, the things in which about the, uh, the abilities, the attributes about him which contribute to his enjoyment and his um, aptitude at um, his, the external abilities, the skills and talents. So, you know, we got some things like uh, creative and insightful. Um, we also had a word open-minded. And at this moment, for whatever reason, I was just pushed to kind of push him a little bit more, um, push his thoughts, um, push his self-awareness a bit. And I'll just share that with you because I thought that was fun. Yeah. Um, Open-minded. Um, have you actually, and, and along those lines, just because I'm curious, you, like you said it was something that you are, it comes naturally to you. Um, could you trace that back to like, like for like young you? Open-minded. Been a very open person. Or would you be a different word? Um, I don't even know how I would trace it back. I was looking, thinking about your younger self. Have you always been, um, I guess, like, non-partisan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as I'm aware, I, I tend to take other people's perspectives rather than my own. Would or you? more so, I just don't really, I don't, oftentimes I don't really take a perspective. And that last thing that he just said, it was 
<laughs> I, I just love going back to listen to these things and editing because I see how it starts to connect. But yeah, this, that last thing that he said links so much to um, the next, you know, his, his final statement and what we uncover later on, even though he struggled to, to see it. But you'll get to see how that unfolds in the next step, which we're almost there. So for now, we have these three innate gifts and we're going to, I think we're just going to focus on them. And if we build some more as we go, then that's cool too. But the three that we have, creative, insightful, and empathetic, right? Do you connect with that? Do you feel like that those are three things that you are? Sure. Sure? Yeah. As in yes or sure as in I guess? Yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> Okay, he was a fun one. That's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> so now that we have his innate gifts narrowed out, awesome sauce, um, <laughs> we are going to go into step two, define, get into, like just like the last episode, get into what his unique value statement is and go through that process. Obviously, little moments at a time. We're not going to fit everything in, but I'll just show you some of the highlight moments just like normal. Um, and this this step, I feel like, really unveils some of the really um, interesting parts of the things that we discussed earlier in terms of like that, especially that one little moment that talked about how he doesn't um, really take on many like his own perspective, really, which is such an interesting way of thinking. I, I loved um, that kind of that point there, but we kind of really get into it here. So I'm excited to unveil what's happening. Let's go. Welcome back. How, how's your day been? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what you should like with my mother. <laughs> okay. Recap. We narrow down. Um, Three. I put another one down I wanted to ask about no. um, afterwards. I put um, nonchalant or calm. 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 Would you consider yourself a calm person? Or? Sure. Okay. You wouldn't. Would you say that it contributes to anything that you're good at? Um. Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm regularly not stressed, so I would say, especially in like a work situation, if something's not not going the way that. Ideally, if you wanted to go, I can, I'm usually, can stay calm and be level-headed and, well, and not let emotion take over in the situation. Okay. So, um, yes, I would agree. Okay, cool. I don't usually, um, like, come back after, you know, one session and come back um, and add things to somebody else, specifically their innate gifts. I don't usually do that, uh, but... There was a nagging feeling about it, and, and just after having the session and learning what I learned about him and the things that he said, there was a lot of um, reoccurring uh, thought processes and ideas, and so I felt like that idea of calm, and um, he had used the word chill multiple times in it, and so I decided to figure out a word um, that might be an innate gift, um, which I you know, thought of nonchalant, and... You know, I wanted to bring that to him and see if that fit. And actually, you know, what he says, uh, he, the last thing he said, keep that in mind as well. Um, that, that tends to, it shows a bit. It, it, uh, It's a bit of a, a window as well. I keep showing windows, but I love little, I love these windows. The windows are the best part for me. Um, so just keep looking out those windows, guys. It's, It makes the picture so much brighter. That was cheesy, oh my God. So to start um, defining this stuff, uh, the first question I want to ask is, would you consider yourself to be a valuable individual? Sure. Sure? Yep. Sure. Yeah, okay, I'll put sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, would you consider yourself to be a valued person? Valued by others? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you just give me just a why for both of those? Just like a general why. I mean, I value myself, so <laughs> I see worth within me. What do you see? Uh, my ability to take other people's perspective, or see other people's perspectives. And you said that you also consider yourself to be a valued person. Why? Mm -hmm. Um, I think most people who know me recognize I'm a good listener and I'm a good sounding board. Mm. I'm usually free of judgment. I love that, free of judgment. Um, anyway, yeah, in uh, this next moment, I asked him a question about what people connect with about him. This opens up a very interesting, like, moment of dialogue, and I, I, I like what we're talking about there. It's different and um, something I've never really thought, I mean, I've thought about before, but not too intensely. It's interesting. 
What is it about you that people will connect with? So personality, energy, story, like a talent. What is it that people like, why people gravitate to you? Why people um, talk to you? Why, what do people connect with about you? Maybe energy. What kind of energy? So I'm very chill. I'm, I'm a very good wingman. Anything else? Um, I tend to be a supporting character in other people's lives. Are you confident in that? confident in it I yeah. mean that I am that and and yeah like in 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 that position in the sense that like you're not trying to be the star kind of, of the show yeah yeah I'm right. very confident in that mm. you know that that is so interesting to me um I'm gonna he goes into a little bit more later so I'll I'll let it play but I just want to cut in and say that's really interesting to me mostly because most of the people that I know most of my friends are a lot more like outgoing than I am, a lot more star of the show, a lot more loud um, than I am. And so the idea of just talking with somebody who's like, yeah, I'm, I want to be that side character. Yeah. Like I'm, 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 you know, the, the wingman, I'm not the star of the show, whatever. Um, I only know a handful of people that are like that. So for me, that, that idea, him just saying that and being confident in that caught me a little bit off guard. I was like, oh, Okay, interesting. And, you know, it's not something I don't think I really have a stance on it, pers- like where I believe I am, if I'm either one of those or whatever. Um, I've definitely thought about it, but I don't know. It's an interesting it's an interesting thought process. Um, and I think, I mean, obviously, it's a very it's a very helpful person to have in your corner, somebody who is willing to support you and doesn't need to have all the attention. I think we all need somebody like that. But that's not all a person ever really is, is it? I mean, obviously you're not a literal supporting character in your... <laughs> but well, in other <laughs> people's lives, yeah. Okay. I like that. Okay. Interesting. Actually, can you talk more on that? Just elaborate? <laughs> um, I would rather be a supporting character in other people's lives than be the star of my own. Mm. How come? Uh, I don't know, I just view my own life to be very mundane and boring. <laughs> but it's not, it's not even so much like I, it's not even like I dislike being mundane and boring. Yeah. It's just, uh, I feel like other people, <laughs> so it's, it's much, other people's lives are very interesting. And then also with the, with the fact that you are like a chill person, like, oh, it would make sense that your own life wouldn't have as much drama. Or like any drama, but it's, yeah. you. But you. Do you feel like you operate better in terms of being more useful to people? Well, I would say that because um, I'm very level-headed. I can. It goes back to the whole uh, compartmentalization of uh, of emotion. This is something that he actually had mentioned earlier, but yeah, he goes into explaining a little bit more now. Mm-hmm. I can rationally see a situation, regardless of of the emotional state behind it. And I find that most people either can't do that or can't do it to the level that I can do it at, Mm. which, um, you know, it's just been something I've become more and more aware of over the years. And it's helped me to give other people advice and guide them through a lot of Mm. stressful situations Mm. that they naturally can't... um, look past emotional feelings and expectations and hurts, Mm. you know, without that kind of support and supervision. Hmm. That was a really important moment. That whole train of thought really set the stage for what his unique value is. Obviously, you guys don't know the statement yet, but if you're paying attention, you notice that he has said these words, this ability to help people through a certain problem or a situation with a clear mind um, and uh, with a lack of emotion. He has said that multiple times in this episode already. And in what he just said, you can see how some of the innate gifts that we had previously defined are working through that, working through this instinctual way of helping someone. Um, dealing, yeah, just dealing with emotional states 
not emotionally. Right. <laughs> so, like, um, if you're going through a stressful situation with someone at work or, mm. you know, someone having issues in their marriage and stuff like that, like, those are, you know, those are situations that have all, that can have a lot of emotion just within that situation on top of the fact, you know, maybe someone also has, you know, issues stemming with uh, their acceptance with their parents mm-hmm. or you know something going on with their child or something like that those are compounded things that people don't even realize are being stacked on them and all they do is focus on the feeling of of what's the weight of everything rather than focusing on the specific issue that they need mm-hmm. to deal with and especially I mean any kind of conflict is twofold it's not just the person who's who I'm friends with it's you know the other person so they all often have a hard time rationalizing Mm. why a person's actions may be a certain way so I always try to try to see not just why a person is feeling the way they are but why their response might be that way why the why the other person might be responding in a certain way and to understand that ultimately you can't control every situation but you can control how you respond and how you act and how you choose to deal with the emotions that you're that you're dealing with and it's not wrong to feel the way that you feel Mm -hmm. but your action shouldn't be dictated by how you feel that would be wrong Mm. You know, that really is a good point. Twofold, actually. One, I mean, we hear it all the time. We hear people talk about how, you know, you can't always control what happens, you know, but you can control how you respond, how you react, how you act. Such a good point. Always a solid point. But on the second hand, why this was such a good point was because this is something that most people have to develop. Most people have to learn, you know, how to control their emotions in this way. And, you know, obviously I haven't known him from his his childhood or anything, but it seems to me that having a certain kind of control or understanding or even compartmentalization of his emotions, being that being an innate gift, has allowed him to unlock the ability to do this with a little bit more ease, more ease than most people, which really goes into what makes him so valuable as we continue on. So it's such a, a powerful point um, in the idea that m- what we think is, what most people would think is so, you know, mundane for them, which is normal, something that we we understand and that we've been doing for the rest, of the, for most of our lives. We look at it as as if it's nothing special, but then we realize that what these things are not as normal for other people as it is for us. And in that realization, that's when we start to see our value. And that's how when we start to see what makes us so unique. And that's when we start to see how what that is that makes us so unique then makes us so valuable. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought that was a, a good moment. Keep everything you just said in mind for the final part. Just don't forget anything you just said. <laughs> Sorry, forgot. No. <laughs> so, so from here we kind of go on just a little bit of a tangent. It's not really. It actually becomes quite important later. But um, in this, there's a question I ask about oh, the percentage in which people get to actually connect with these aspects of him that we listed before, talking about that chill energy, that being a wingman, that supporting kind of person, whatever. And you really only give it a forty percent. And so I was kind of like curious about why that was so low and even more so if he maybe wants to be able to share more of that with people. Like this way you connect people in this way, it's not, you really do feel like it's not necessarily for everybody or even for a lot of people. Um, it's, it's not so much that it's not for anyone. It's like, I mean, it's like, it's almost like God, you know, in the sense of your relationship with him. It's like you get as much of him as you want. Mm. And, like, if you want more, then there's more. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not necessarily, like, advertising, like, hey, there's a lot more to me, y'all. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> but, um, you know. No, I ask only because, like, my my questioning on this is, is just to kind of figure out, are you kind of somebody that prefers for people to almost come to me come to you and then you build like that relationship there or do you want to just I mean, make an impact in lots of people in people's ideally, lives ideally 
I mean, <laughs> ideally, yes, it would be would be better if everyone just came to me. <laughs> it's right, like, okay. you know what? I'd like to know more about you. <laughs> um, at the same time, I do recognize that, especially like in my ministry calling, that I have to get to a point where I'm more comfortable sharing sharing who I am and mm. and the gifts and abilities that God has given me. Yeah. Um, I can't I can't be as shy and as I've as I've normally been about it. Okay, but so that's like really interesting because this process. This process, of, at least what what I had in mind in terms of like the vision for it, is understanding who God has designed you to be for others, right? It's like that unique value is about that impact that you're making. And so understanding all those aspects and how they work together like on purpose made me more want, like willing and wanting to share that with people, right? And then the more that I wanted to share that with people, the more I wanted to share more of just like me with people, right? So... My hope is that, like, by the end of it, getting your statement will at least put some things in, like, perspective in terms of who you are, how you see yourself, how you see your work, um, and how you see your impact on people's lives, like, how important you see yourself in the world. The idea, I genuinely believe that, you know, our lives are not about us. You know, it, we are, to be honest, we are, we're a minority <laughs> in in our own life story, right? And he said that himself when he was talking about, um, he didn't say those exact words, but he was saying that, like, you know, as a wingman or whatever, he's, he, he's not the main character in somebody else's life. He's a side character in somebody else's life. And so with that in mind, I just, like, I wanted to, to push to live in that purposeful life. Is that, is that, as a purposeful life about you or is a purposeful life about living and, and and operating in what you can do for others this is just the question to pose and this is kind of what I'm almost working to answer throughout this whole process um but yeah let's keep thinking about it why not I think that when we finish this off and we finish we see all this the goal is to incorporate as much as this in, of this into the, the backbone of your, your life, right? Because this is you. It's what you designed to be. And if it's not showing up a lot, then it should be showing up more. Like, we should be striving to show up more because if not, then we're not living in purpose, mm-hmm. right? In Preach. You're welcome. <laughs> so at this point now, we're getting into um, doing his statement. I came up with his original, with one, you know, version of his statement, um, and then I wanted him to kind of, you know, vamp on his own. First thing I need you to do is think about everything you just said about your innate gifts. Don't remember. He was no help. <laughs> but eventually came up with a statement, um, a, a version, which was, my unique value is to objectively see past the muck and mire of the world in order to help others see with eyes unclouded by emotion, which was quite lovely. But... Felt like it. Some of it was maybe more necessary than need to be. I wanted to work on a more finite statement, um, a definition, right? That really, truly defines his unique value. What are you seeing past? What's the muck and mire? Your face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, he was no help. <laughs> Um, but finally, uh, finally, we got to a final statement. I want to now do a final statement where we are. It's the final statement. <laughs> 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 All right, that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> this took a while. Anyway, um, so I'll share with you the final statement now, and then we will hop on to the final step, step three, embrace. So the final statement that we came up with, which I think is really good. Um, obviously, I wouldn't share it, but I didn't think it was good. Um, <laughs> it is, my unique value is looking past distractions in order to help others see with eyes unclouded by emotion. This is actually a statement that he, uh, the, the, the last words, um, I, seeing with eyes unclouded by emotion is something that he has said um, before. 
um, not in the podcast, but just outside of the podcast. And um, I just thought that that was really, um, I, he really wanted that in there. And I thought that, you know, it it, it makes sense. It clarifies a lot. It, it, it says what it needs to say. And I think the, the whole statement really, really summarizes the way that he operates um, uh, for others and the way that he makes an impact, a unique impact in people's lives. So, yeah, I like it. So now we'll be wrapping up with step three, embrace, which y'all haven't had the pleasure of experiencing yet, but for the first time you will. Um, This is a very important step uh, for me and uh, for the process and more so, though, for the individual as it it puts the um, what, what we've learned over the past couple days into perspective for them. And it encourages uh, the intention that is necessary in living an impactful and purposeful life. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so this episode is about embracing your unique value. It's about um, intention, it's about figuring out how um, we use it, you, how you use it, um, how you use it unconsciously, and how you can be more intentional about acting within value. Embracing your unique value is about understanding how your unique value affects you personally, professionally, and other people. We've delved into it a little bit, but I really want to get into um, just just a little bit deeper. You're you're curious um, only because you've been the first so far of people I've done this with who hasn't seen like immediate an immediate kind of like personal impact in terms of understanding their statement and everything you've been able to kind of tie it already to what you do you get a you've gotten a deep you say that you've gotten a deeper understanding of purpose right but you feel like you know it's not a huge difference right in terms of what you knew and what you knew before what you know now right is that is a rat right and saying yeah okay cool so yeah as you'll see in later episodes or you'll hear in later episodes um People generally get really gravity to that the personal effect or the personal yeah impact that understanding their statement has on them. Like it changes the way they might have seen themselves. They may see themselves in a different light. Um, this individual, Myron, has really he already kind of grasped who he was. So the UV statement for him more so showed light into what he needs to be doing more for people, right? And so that, so um, I'll just give you a little heads up. This uh, step is usually broken down into three parts. We talk about how your unique value can affect your life personally, how your unique value affects um, your professional life, and how your unique value affects other people. We're going to skip ahead and just go through the moments that are in the uh, people section because I found that that was where the bigger impact was and the more insightful moments came from. So to kick it off, um, we kind of come back around to this very important point that we discussed earlier um, and we get to kind of see his change in perspective, maybe like a shift in perspective, which I think was really important. You prefer people more so to come to you and you just help those that you, you know, come to you and come in, right? Is that more so what you say? I mean, or? generally more comfortable that way. Okay. But I do recognize within myself that I have to step out of that a little bit more. To live, to, why? Why? I mean, well, more so I just feel like um, that's the kind of the direction that God has called me towards. I don't know mm-hmm. specifically yet, but um, I know I have to get out of my comfort zone on a lot of different things. Okay, keep that in mind then, so in this last section. So this last section is people. How can your UV affect others, right? Mm -hmm. So this session is all about really what this whole thing is about. Um, It's about um, others, right? It's about how we are living beyond ourselves and making sure that our lives are not just about us. Um, I find that UV is exactly how to do that. Um, and so in this state, in this, this series of questions is basically going to figure out who are you for, who are you made to serve, who will your UV affect most and how do you find them, right? So, um, the first question is what kind of person can connect with your unique value? Thinking about your statement, I want you to tell me five attributes of this like ideal individual. Cutting in really quick, he had mentioned earlier, I didn't put it in, in the podcast, just in order to keep short on time, but he had said, he had mentioned uh, a moment about how... You know, people 
that, you know, people, there are people who won't come to me because they know that I will not enable them, that I will not be an enabler, that I want them to think things through. And, you know, I just, I thought that was really good. And so, you know, this question pushes that thinking, you know, who am I, who am I equipped to help, right? You know, being aware that we are not going to serve everybody is super important point, <laughs> super important for us to realize, and that we don't have to. We are going to serve the people that can listen to us, who need us, um, who we are important to, and that's okay. We don't have to be a, a savior. <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to be. So the qualities he came up with, by the way, I'm just going to list them now just for sake of time, but it was open, honest, specifically with themselves, with oneself, um, open-minded, unselfish, not it have to be necessarily selfless, but just lacking selfishness, and curious. And then from here, <laughs> I don't know, maybe he just was unsure about the words or who he was actually helping, but... We got a little wonky. It's all good. <laughs> um, what was the qualities? <laughs> <laughs> open, honest, open-minded, unselfish, curious. Maybe we should change all of those. All of that? Because, I mean, like... Do you need to hear your statement again? No, no. It's... Because, like, even... Okay, so, like, with the last one, I was thinking, it's like, well, realistically, the person who comes to me has to... I mean, like, those things are usually the end goal of what right. I'm trying to right. get to. Okay. Um, but not to say that they don't necessarily have... Well, okay, like, bare bones, if if someone's coming to me, that means that they have a problem. Um, so, okay, so here's... I think this is what might be getting a little stuck with it, is only because... I mean, unless you see that your statement can only be utilized in one scenario, a person that has dealing with a problem and needs to be solved, then, then I then, then I guess okay, these uh, these attributes are it. But the idea behind the statement is not that you're only going to be doing one thing; like you can only accomplish yeah, one yeah, thing. Yeah. Okay, There's a I spectrum mean, of what you could yeah, do for yeah, somebody. I mean. This is such an important point. Because in terms of the unique value statement, the imagery I really want to share with you is this. It is allowing us to recognize what tool we are, what we are designed to do. Think of like a wrench, right? A wrench is usually used to, to, to tighten bolts and to um, fix strains pipes, but it's usually doing the same thing, either tightening or loosening. Our unique value statement you know, recognizes, it allows us to see what what we're doing. We tighten and loosen objects. That's the unique value statement of a wrench. It's not to say that a wrench now will only be used for this pipe at this sink forever. No, this tool can be used on that sink, on that bolt, on that nut. It can be used in multiple different situations, in multiple different scenarios, but it will always consistently be doing the same way in its own way. That is the beauty of a statement. It does not confine you to one job, to one role, to one external ability. It allows us to see what we do best and how we can use that through different jobs, through different roles, through different external abilities. I'm just thinking about, like, how what normally happens. <laughs> right, yeah. I think, so you have to think, it's harder, but you have to kind of think a little bit bigger. Like, who potentially might come, what, uh, what other situations can you serve than just a problem? Can you help someone expand on something? You help someone build something? Like, what can you, what other ways can you help somebody? And then, then you can figure out who that person is that's coming to you. What else can you do? Problem solve, uh... Give perspective. Mm -hmm. Create levity <laughs> by actually levitating the person. <laughs> <laughs> um, give a sense of ease. So now we are at the final question. It ties together the UV statement as well as what he's aiming to do in terms of opening himself up to the world and letting what he has to offer be shared with others. All right, last question. How can you use your UV to find these people and for them to find you? 
No idea. <laughs> no idea. Oh, that makes sense. That's okay. Yeah. Most people don't. But what what physical action do you feel like can be taken in order to allow people to see what it is that you have to offer? Um, physical action. Um, be more outgoing. Or outspoken. Or just out. <laughs> Go out. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking about like like what can what can allow what can what can illuminate your light? Let my light shine. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Oh my gosh, what a high honor! That compliment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to take it back? <laughs> I was. <laughs> I should have said you. <laughs> Let's see. How can I let my light shine? Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Uh, to not just wait for people to reach out to me, but to reach out to others. Who should you reach out to? The people. Just people? Yeah. Who are you going to reach out to? People in my life. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. About what? About <laughs> no, what? Leave it, leave it, leave it. I'll leave it like that. It's fine. And that's it. There we go. We have finally gone through an entire, I mean, it's only the third episode, but we've finally gone through an entire process with one um, participant uh, for case study. Uh, some episodes will be like this. Some episodes will be broken down to part ones and part twos. But I really hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know if you prefer the part one, part two format, or if you'd like to continue me doing it this way um, with just one episode encapsulating the, the entire process for the case study with that individual. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. Once again, make sure that you, you know, like and share and let me know how you're liking the format. And if you are interested in being a part of the UV effect research that I'm doing, you would like the process to be tested out on you, be a little test uh, bunny for me. Uh, I would love, <laughs> I'd love that. Please send me a DM on Instagram and we can definitely talk. Um, I've already been doing that with a couple, a few people who've listened to the podcast. So definitely, you know, send me a message. Um, and again, yeah, thanks so much for listening. I will be here next week on Thursday with another episode of the UV Effect Podcast. See you then.